بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأنبياء والمرسلين My brothers and sisters some of us celebrated Eid last weekend on the day of Sunday and some of us celebrated Eid on the day of Monday and the ones that did it on Sunday did it for whatever reasons they had and the ones that did it on Monday did it for whatever reasons they had and this is an ongoing thing in fact I remember one particular time when Eid was celebrated in this country on three different days and the most common thing that we hear in response to this is that Muslims are divided, that we can't come together. <clears throat> but today I want to pose a slightly different question. And today my question is this, is this thing actually a problem? Differences have always been there. What sort of things are differences valid over and what sort of things differences are not valid over is a discussion and a debate in of itself. But what is clear is that difference in one form or another has always existed in the Muslim society and Muslim communities. And ultimately the question is of our response to these differences. It is about how we deal with them in a society and how we live with them in a community. And I often feel that in our efforts to unite over celebrating Eid on a single day, we have slowly and slowly drifted even further apart. I repeat that, I feel that in our efforts to unite to do Eid on a single day, we have begun to differ and fight with the different groups such that as groups we are becoming further and further away. I want to share a story from the time of our Rasul Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he asked a group of people who were about to travel to a particular location and he asked them that no one amongst you should pray Asr except when you reach that location. And he وسلم, was not traveling with them at that particular occasion. And so the Sahaba got together and they departed on this journey. And as they were on this journey, the time for Maghrib started to become close. <coughs> and so they started discussing as to what to do. On one hand, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had given a very clear instruction. And on the other hand, they were going to miss their salah. And so two different opinions arose amongst them. One said that when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that they should not pray Asr except when they get to that location, he meant it metaphorically in that he was asking them so that they can rush and get to their destination before Maghrib comes. He did not mean that you should miss your salah when the time of salah comes and is about to go. And the other said, well, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that you should not pray except you get to your location. We take those words literally and therefore we will not pray till we get to our location. And they could not unite on something. So both of the groups did what they thought was the correct thing to do. So some of them stopped and prayed, whereas others went on and prayed when they arrived on their location. So when they returned and they came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they told him about what had happened and how they had gotten to their conclusion. 
and what they then did. And so he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that neither of them were wrong and that both of them and what they did was acceptable. He could have even said that it's okay for you to have had these differences but the correct thing to do was this. But he didn't do that. He said that both were acceptable. And in saying so, he approved the method that both of the groups had used to reach their conclusion. Now many people now argue that disagreements are fine but that there is only one truth. And therefore we should establish and try to find that one single truth. And I think what we often fail to realize with that theory is that when we come to a difference that is not because of some miscalculation in mathematics, but rather it takes into account a historical context, it takes into account semantics of language, and ultimately it takes into account the subjectivity which comes with any form of human interpretation. And therefore what matters more is the method that is used to reach a particular conclusion. When the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to send Mu'ad radiallahu an to Yemen, he asked him, how will you judge when a case is presented to you? So he said, well, I will judge by the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, well, what if you don't find the answer in the book of Allah? He said, well, then I will look at the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he then said, what if, you, what if you don't find the answer in that? And he said, well, then I will strive with my opinion and I will spare no effort. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was satisfied with his method. And this clarifies, firstly, that not everyone will be able to find the answers even though they might exist in these sources and secondly he approved of the method that Mu'ad was going to use and the method was to strive hard to find the truth and the key in this is striving honestly and genuinely to finding the truth and historically, many scholars and imams have done this. They have strived to find the right thing and reached a different conclusion. And if all of this is not satisfactory, then I highlight what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, which is, that to Allah you will all return. And then He will tell you about the things in which you used to differ. So the question is where does this leave us? And Imam Mufti Menk was asked this question with regards to deciding on the moon. And he said, instead of having conversations about moon sighting, we have now begun moon fighting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hujrat, <coughs> Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً That the believers are nothing but one brotherhood. فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ so make peace between your brothers. He goes on to say, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la yashar qawmum min qawmin asa an yakunu khayram minhum. That all oh, those of you who believe, do not let some men amongst you think that they are better than the others. It may be that the others are better than them. My brothers and sisters, 
it is okay to differ on something which is minor. As long as you have strived and worked hard to find out what the right way is. It would be wonderful if everybody in this country can celebrate Eid on a single day. <clears throat> but what divides us is not that we sometimes celebrate Eid on a different day. What divides us is our intolerance of someone who celebrates Eid on a different day. <clears throat> so it's okay to differ. What is not okay is to fall out with each other on the basis of that difference. What is not okay is to be arrogant of your opinion. I will finish with this. Islam is a community, not a cult. I'll repeat, Islam is a community, not a cult. We welcome people into our religion despite some differences rather than exclude them from our religion because of those differences. We encourage the asking of questions rather than forbid asking of questions. And lastly, we are inclusive, not exclusive. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم <تصفيق>